coming up on Torrance today. Election results continue to come in with one district holding just about 30 votes between the top two candidates. We've got the numbers. Plus, DoorDash just released a list of favorite U.S. restaurants and two Torrance spots got a shout out. And June is Pride Month. See what Torrance's YMCA is doing during this very important time. All this and more coming up right now on Torrance Today. Welcome to Torrance Today. I'm Leslie Robbins. It's 4 p.m. on Wednesday, June 15th. I hope you're having a great day so far. Thank you so much for joining us. Here is our first story. While Election Day may have already happened, ballots continue to be counted. And in that process, one race holds just 32 votes between the top two candidates. All this in just a span of the last 24 hours. Let's start with the remaining races, which aren't seeing the same kind of swing in votes. Councilmember George Chen continues to lead the mayoral race. Former Councilmember Tim Goodrich remains to lead the way to become the next city treasurer. John Kaji for Council District 1 and Assam Sheikh in Council District 3. Plus, Measure SST continues to remain supported by the community, which, if passed, would add a half-cent sales tax to the city's existing 9.5% tax on retail purchases, bringing in nearly $18 million annually to help fund the city, supporting public safety, infrastructure, reserves, and more. Now, it's the race in District 5 between Council Member Aurelio Matucci and Jean Edelsman that has folks on the edge of their seats. Just yesterday, the numbers had Matucci retaining his seat with 51.25% of the votes, 2,402 votes to be exact, and Edelsman was at 48.75% with 2,285 of the votes. Well, Fast forward to today, there is a new leader in the race. As of this broadcast, Edelsman is now the top vote getter with 3,290 votes, 50.24%, and Matucci is in second with 3,258 votes, 49.76%. That's literally a 32 vote difference between the two. We will be sure to keep you updated on this race as well as the others. The County of Los Angeles Registrar Recorder County Clerk shared its upcoming Canvas schedule for the statewide direct primary election, and the next one is on Friday. For more details on our local election, visit torrentca.gov election. And for updated election results, visit lavote.gov. A show of support continues to pour in for the city of El Monte and their two officers who were shot and killed in the line of duty. Torrance Police Chief Jay Hart and the Torrance Police Department stand in solidarity with their fellow officers. In a statement to City Cable, Chief Hart expressed, quote, I mourn for the El Monte police officers who were killed, their families, El Monte PD, and the community of El Monte. May we honor their sacrifice through our continued service, end quote. It all happened early Tuesday evening when two El Monte police officers were struck and fatally injured in a shootout with a suspect. El Monte Mayor Jessica Ancanoa said this tragedy has left the city beyond heartbroken. According to the L.A. County Sheriff's Department, which is leading the investigation, the officers responded to a call about a possible stabbing at an El Monte motel. When the officers arrived, they confronted the suspect and an officer-involved shooting occurred. The suspect was also struck by gunfire and he was pronounced deceased at the scene. The two officers were taken to Los Angeles County and USC Medical Center where they died of their injuries. The Sheriff's Department said it appears no victim was stabbed, but authorities are investigating. 
One of the slain officers was a veteran of the police force with at least 22 years on the job. The other officer had been on the job for less than a year. Torrance Police, along with the Torrance Unified School District, responded quickly to what appeared to be a potential threat. On the heels of the devastating school shooting in Texas, the Torrance Police Department was contacted about an image uploaded on social media relating to a school threat at North High School on June 10th. Well, the case was immediately investigated by officers from patrol, detectives, and special investigation divisions. During the investigation, the student was identified and made contact with as well as their parents. Torrance Police tells City Cable that all involved parties are fully cooperating with the department on this investigation. Based on the investigation, which included interviews and a search of the home, Officers determined there was no credible threat to any students or staff at North. We're told the police are continuing to work with North High staff to provide a safe and secure environment. The Torrance Police Department stated they take these cases seriously and have brought in all available resources to investigate this incident. The department continues to encourage the community to be vigilant of any criminal or suspicious activity. See something? say something and they want you to know that the men and women of the Torrance Police Department are committed to protecting the safety of our students in Torrance and are working with Torrance Unified School District staff on creating an environment where students and teachers can thrive. It was a Torrance resident that led the efforts behind South Bay's recent March for Our Lives event. Lance Dominguez arranged the emotional march held on Saturday that drew an estimated 200 gun legislation supporters who met at noon at the Manhattan Beach Pier and marched to the Hermosa Beach Pier for a rally on Pier Plaza. At the rally, which was also attended by Assembly Member Almir Tsuchi, Dominguez played a recorded message from one of his former Seaside Torrance neighbors, Rebecca Boldrick a former Torrance School District teacher. Boldrick's son, David, and daughter, Lauren, attended Seaside Elementary, Calamayor Middle School, and South High School before the family moved to Parkland, Florida in 2016. On February 14, 2018, Boldrick's son and daughter were in a class at Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland when former student Nicholas Cruz opened fire on students and teachers with an AR-15 assault rifle killing 17 people and injuring 17 others. The following month, her son, David Hogg, co-organized the inaugural March for Life in Washington, D.C. Time magazine named him one of the 100 most influential people in 2018. Saturday's March for Life was one of hundreds nationwide, held in response to the May 24th killing of 19 students and two teachers and the wounding of 17 others at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas by an AR-15 wielded by 18-year-old Uvalde high school student Salvador Ramos. At the rally, Assembly Member Mir Suchi said, California has the strongest gun laws in the U.S. Its 111 gun laws include background check requirements and a red flag ban on high-risk people having guns. In January, Mirtsuchi co-authored a bill that would prohibit manufacturing and assembling unserialized firearms, commonly known as ghost guns. He said at the rally, quote, I'm proud to say every time the National Rifle Association releases a scorecard, I get an F. Tomorrow night, the Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce will host their annual installation and award ceremony. This annual event recognizes and installs incoming Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors and honors individuals and or businesses who have displayed outstanding performances. Some notable awards to be presented are Pelican Products for Large Business of the Year. Nonprofit of the Year was earned by Volunteer Center South Bay Harbor Long Beach. The Excellence in Business Award will be presented to Street Fair Antiques and Stan Gray from Fast Signs of Torrance Nab the Emerging Leader Award. 
The event will also establish Minal Moncar as the chairwoman of the board of the Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce. The ceremony will be held at the Doubletree by Hilton Hotel in Torrance. Well, speaking of awards, two Torrance restaurants just made the cut in the most loved spots by a popular food delivery app. The food delivery platform DoorDash just announced their first annual awards list that honors the 100 most loved all-star restaurants in the United States for 2022. Fewer than 1% of the DoorDash restaurants qualified, and the criteria included restaurants that are reliable, top rated by consumers, and exceptional at operations. And without further ado, the two local hotspots are Fohana Restaurant and Rascal's Teriyaki Grill. Fohana is a Vietnamese eatery that has been hidden in a cozy strip mall setting for the past 25 years. They serve up yummy soup bowls, fried rice, barbecue beef or pork rice plates, egg rolls, spring rolls, and other regional fare. You can do delivery, takeout, or dine-in at the restaurant, which is located at 22815 Hawthorne Boulevard. And for the past 30 years, Rascal's Teriyaki Grill has been dedicated to serving quality, tasty, and authentic Japanese-American family recipes to the South Bay community. Established in 1987 by brothers Wayne and Phil at 4111 Torrance Boulevard, Rascals is to this day a family-operated small business. With locations in Gardena, Torrance, and Long Beach, the family strives to provide the most enjoyable eating experience at modest prices. DoorDash's 2022 Most Loved All-Stars list celebrates the local restaurants, like our two here in Torrance, that go above and beyond for their customers' online orders time and time again. A free lunch program kicked off this week for kids all over Los Angeles. Los Angeles City Parks announced throughout the summer months its summer food service program will help get kids full meals while school is out. Many students at Los Angeles public schools depend on regular lunches, but officials say sometimes when school is out, kids can go hungry for much of, if not all of the day. Kids can go to about 100 different LA parks and rec centers to get a free lunch, no questions asked, and no sign up required. Lunches are available for any child ages one through 18, and parents can even pick up meals for their children. Lunch services will take place Monday through Friday, starting this past Monday and ending on August 8th. For more information on the LA Parks Lunch Program, visit laparks.org slash food program. Well, grab your dog and come celebrate the grand opening of a new dog training facility right here in Torrance. Zoom Room, the leading in-person dog training expert with 21 plus locations on all things related to dog and dog care, has a mission to not train dogs, but rather to train the humans who love them. Developed around positive reinforcement techniques, Zoom Room emerged with an emphasis on socialization for both dogs and their owners through its offering of puppy, obedience, agility, and enrichment classes. With Zoom Room's fun and engaging classes, pet parents are able to exercise with their dog, learn the best training tips and tricks, and how to navigate separation anxiety as people go back to their normal daily routines. And now we've got one right here in Torrance and its opening is this weekend. During the grand opening event on Saturday from 4 to 6 p.m., there will be fun activities for both you and your furry friend, including a pet photographer, a photo booth, bobbing for hot dogs, tricks, a disco, doggy donuts, and gift bags with treats from Lazy Dog Restaurant and Bar, Wild Meadow Farm, and Real Meat. Plus, Zoom Room will donate $10 for every person that attends the grand opening to Canine Companions, a nonprofit that trains service dogs for adult, children, and veterans with physical and auditory disabilities. Additionally, Zoom Room will be teaming up with Lazy Dog to further promote the cause. On June 21st, any guest can come to Lazy Dog at Delamo Fashion Center, mention the fundraiser, 
and 15% of their total bill will be donated to Canine Companions. Zoom Room is located at 18521 Hawthorne Boulevard near 186th Street. Father's Day is this Sunday, and if you're looking for something to do with dad or the perfect gift for your pops, perhaps, we've got a couple of ideas that may hit a home run. How about a Father's Day fundraiser? Speaking of Lazy Dog Restaurant, not only is this torrent spot celebrating Father's Day all weekend with their good food, but they want you to join them in supporting families living in poverty who have been impacted by the COVID-19 crisis. This Father's Day weekend, they will match your donations made to Baby to Baby, a nonprofit organization that provides children living in poverty with diapers, clothing, and all the basic necessities that every child deserves. Lazy Dog will match donations made through a link on their website, in restaurant checkout, and online ordering. Now, if you order online, check out through order.lazydogrestaurant.com from June 17th through the 19th, and up to $15,000 of all donations made will go directly to Baby to Baby for families impacted by the COVID-19 crisis. And how about a spa day for dad? Yes, pampering is not just for moms at Burke Williams in Torrance. Located in the Torrance Town Center, the popular spa is celebrating hardworking dads out there with the perfect gift of self-care. The famed destination will treat dads to a self-healing getaway filled with exclusive wellness services fit for every type of dad. Just in time for the holiday, the spa has launched their exclusive self-care summer specials. Guests and their loved ones will be rewarded for taking care of their well-being by receiving bonus gift cards up to $400 when purchasing regular gift cards available now through August 11th. For additional information, visit burkewilliams.com. Well, still ahead, it is Pride Month, and the YMCA Torrance South Bay is participating in various events that align with their mission of providing a safe, welcoming community for all. Stay with us. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who babes. He would never try it. She's in the soccer. She's on the honor roll. She's just on the table. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Oh, hey. If you love me enough to tolerate my perfect little pets and all their glorious dander, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. Welcome back to Torrance Today. At the end of every episode of Torrance Today, we want to leave you with a positive story from our community that fits the theme for the day. Let's make today Wellness Wednesday, and what a great time to take care of ourselves and each other during Pride Month. And for this story, we went to the YMCA Torrance South Bay. Yes, Pride Month is a time when the LAY lives up to its mission of providing a safe, welcoming community for all, the YMCA Torrance South Bay is proudly for all, and they welcome you to join them in this effort. It's very important for the YMCA to participate in Pride Month because we're a very community-oriented organization. We give back to our community and we want to create a safe space where they can feel like themselves. Whether they come from another country, whether they identify as a different gender, whether they identify as a different sexual orientation, we all are welcoming here and we want to create that safe space that they can feel like themselves. The Y has an amazing parade going on in Boyle Heights this Saturday, June 18th. And the Torrance South Bay YMCA is fortunate enough to take a couple of teenagers to go and participate in that massive event. They've expressed interest in attending these types of events because they want to be able to express themselves, understanding that during Pride Month it's a very internal feeling, but 
they're finally able to express it outwardly and externally. So it'll be a great uh, opportunity for them to be themselves amongst their peers. The YMCA is all about welcoming everybody and all about inclusion and equity. And we feel that being a part of the Pride Month festivities is a great way for the Y to embrace our community and make sure that everybody feels that they're welcome here. In addition to the Boyle Heights Parade mentioned this Saturday, the Y is hosting an LGBTQ plus resource network happy hour via Zoom next Thursday, June 23rd at 4 p.m. And the next day on June 24th, it's We Wear Rainbow Day. The Y invites you to join them by wearing your colors to stand in solidarity with LGBTQ plus inclusion and equity. They ask to please post pictures to your social media with the hashtag We Wear Rainbow. For over 50 years, people around the world have come together to celebrate Pride Month when people recognize the diversity of LGBTQI plus communities while acknowledging that the movement to advance the human rights of LGBTQI plus persons has been one of both struggle and progress. Pride Month commemorates the Stonewall Uprising of Fateful Day in 1969 when LGBTQI plus people fought back against police mistreatment and discrimination. Their act of protest led to the birth of a human rights movement. That movement ultimately helped secure greater recognition of the human rights of LGBTQI persons and strengthened American democracy itself. Communities are stronger when all people, regardless of sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, or sex characteristics, are fully recognized as free and equal members of their society. For more information about the YMCA's Pride Month initiatives, please visit ymcala.org. Well, that is our show for today. Let us know if you have a positive story to tell by emailing us again at torrentstoday at torrentca.gov. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow with more news from and for our Torrance community. Have a great day.